Welcome to the Department of Computer Science Information Session. My name is Ms. Tony Ann Marini, and I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Advising. I'm also a two-time graduate of NC State. Um, you could check us out on the web and on our various social media pages. So the Department of Computer Science is part of the NC State College of Engineering, uh, and we're one of the nation's oldest and largest departments of computer science. Uh, we are a, we're founded in 1967, and we have so many things that make our department super awesome. Um, there is lots of research going on. We have lots of our faculty members who are part of research centers and labs and groups. Um, and we have many faculty members who receive things like the National Science Foundation Early Career Awards and other cool things that help Help not only bring prestige to our department, uh, but allow for our department to interact with um, other colleges, other universities, other um, organizations, so that we can benefit from the diversity of other people's experiences. Um, so our department uh, head is Dr. Rothermel. Um, we have a uh, director of graduate programs, our director of undergraduate programs. We have a senior design center director or director of undergraduate advising. Um, we have an associate department head. Um, we have our directors of the graduate career services and engagement and external relations. So we have a lot of key people who are helping to run our department um, and making sure that we are uh, efficient and effective. And um, all of these folks are always happy to listen to things by, uh, by the community, um, by our strategic planning committee, by the university, um, and everybody, we work here as a team um, in the computer science department. We also have this really cool thing um, called the ePartners program, which is basically our corporate relations. We have over a hundred companies that want to pair directly with NC State's computer science department, with our department, to help not only with outreach and student recruitment, um, but to help with sponsorships and other other sorts of um, other sorts of things that that we can do on campus. Um, and so to give you an idea of some of the companies that uh, sp help sponsor our department, um, we have two different groups. So we have these super e-partners, um, which some of these companies are very large and you may have heard of them. Like maybe you've heard of Fidelity Investments or IBM or Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, Cisco, SAS, uh, Oracle, but maybe you haven't heard of some of the smaller companies, or maybe you have. You know, some of them are local and some of them are global. And these are companies that are super invested in our department, helping us grow and helping us uh, and helping employ our, our, our students as they graduate, which is, I'm sure, the most important thing on everyone's mind. We also have other partners. Um, these are not super e partners but um, they are still e-partners nonetheless. Um, and again, you will see more names um, that you might know and others that you might not know. Um, but all of these companies, you know, some of them you're like, okay, Red Hat, Google, those are technology companies, but Lowe's, that's like a home improvement store. I go there for PVC pipe. Um, or Eastman, they make chemicals, like what's up with that? Well, the great thing is, is that computer science is such a varied field that everybody needs our help. Um, computer science is, is really the place to be, and all of these companies need people to either be software engineers or to be database managers or to be their IT folks or um, their security people. Um, and so the nice thing is, no matter what your interests are, you can likely get a job in, you know, if you really like working on cars, advanced auto parts, look at them. They, they do all sorts of cool stuff with vehicles. So our ePartners program is really great. And their funding helps support so many things, like our student ambassadors program, which you will hear from three of our student ambassadors uh, near the end of this presentation. Um, they help with all sorts of different events. Um, and when we are meeting in person, they provide a lot of food um, for our students on campus. And as all college students know, Know, free food is awesome and just tastes better, um, especially when it's pizza. 
So the great thing about our e-partners is they are interested in our students, um, in, in their welfare um, and in their development, and they're interested in our department. They like the things that we're doing, um, and we are very happy to have them. Now, some really cool points of interest about our department specifically um, is we have been recognized as a center of academic excellence. Um, we are the first university in North America to establish an IBM Q hub for quantum computing, which I read that bullet point in full because it's such a cool thing. Um, we do have a game development concentration that's been rated in the top 25. Um, we have been highly rated in a lot of best value for your um, for your degree, um, best school to earn a master's degrees in um, different types of concentrations like our cybersecurity concentration. Um, we are an accredited university through the ABET, um, which is a very important thing because without accreditation, um, employers don't really know what kind of um, rigor the the curriculum is. Um, we are a top supplier of new graduate talent, both at the undergraduate level and graduate level, to a lot of really big companies. Um, and we were number one in tenure track female faculty among all computer science departments in the colleges of engineering. Um, our department is very large, it's very diverse. Um, we have a variety of backgrounds between people who have computer science degrees, math degrees, physics degrees, um, and uh, two of our advising staff um, have degrees in psychology and counseling um, because those things are also needed. So we're a department that, that values diversity, not just um, based on one particular item, but we're serving all of the students of, of North Carolina, um, all of the students of the nation, um, and all of the students around the globe. Um, we are a, a full service department of computer science um, that is part of the College of Engineering. So some of the programs that we offer. Um, and, and this is uh, related only to our undergraduate programs, um, as this is a, uh, uh, an open house presentation for, for mainly our, our undergraduate program. But we do offer a Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science. We have two concentrations. Um, one of them is our Game Development concentration. Um, and this concentration is about 10 years old. Um, and then starting in the spring, we are going to have our cybersecurity concentration. And I will explain how concentrations um, work in, in a little bit when we get to um, how the curriculum is laid out. We also have two tracks, uh, one in security and one in entrepreneurship. Um, and I will explain the difference between a concentration and a track, uh, but this is a good place to you know, start learning some, some interesting verbiage. Um, we also offer a computer programming minor. So some folks wanna know about how to program, but they're not so in love with it that they want their whole major to be that way, or they just want to supplement. Um, we have folks who want to um, go to law school, um, but they maybe wanna do patent law, and so they're thinking about, you know, uh, having a computer programming minor. Um, we also have what we call an ABM, or the Accelerated Bachelors to Masters program, um, which is where you can do some graduate work at the same time as you're completing your bachelor's, and then when you graduate, you get some time to finish the master's in, a, in about five years rather than six or seven years. Um, we have a CSC honors program. This is on top of the university's honors and scholars programs, which are separate, um, and students can do both or all three. Um, in fact, one of our ambassadors is doing the ABM and one of our other ambassadors is in the scholars program, so you'll hear about that in a little while. Um, we also follow the College of Engineering's um, change of degree process, which is the CODA process. There's lots of acronyms here at NC State. Um, and we follow the university's general education requirements. So all students have to take um, certain classes in order to declare a major, and all students also have to, in order to graduate and receive a computer science degree, also have to take classes in the humanities and social science, economics, and, and some other such courses. Um, so you're really getting three degrees in one. You're getting a computer science degree, you're getting an engineering degree, and you're getting a four-year education, um, which is a pretty good bargain. So 
let's talk about the classes because that's the important part, right? So the first year for most of the College of Engineering students looks exactly identical. Everybody takes chemistry and English, two, uh, a few semesters of calculus, physics, a couple other things. Um, but where it's different is in the second semester with the first programming course. Um, so in computer science, uh, we do a introduction to programming using Java. Whereas in civil construction environmental engineering, they focus on Python uh, and mechanical aerospace, biomed and nuclear, they focus on MATLAB um, and majors like chemical engineering and material science don't have an introductory class, um, industrial and systems engineering have their own class that they teach. So the, the first, the, the second semester students usually take one different sort of intro to major class or something along those lines. But generally the first semester looks the same for most students in the College of Engineering. Now some of these classes you might have AP credit for, um, some of them you may have taken a, a, a CSLEP test for, some of them you may have done a dual enrollment at NC State or a community college. Um, so it is possible for you to already have credit for some of these classes, but all NC State majors can be completed in four years, in eight semesters, even if you came in with nothing, as long as you've come in with the correct prerequisites. Um, if you've had, um, you're able to, to take chemistry or calculus one, if you, if you haven't had pre-calculus, you know, some of those things can, can be difficult. Um, but the great thing is about computer science is you don't have to have any programming experience. In fact, we've had tons of students who come in who have never even owned their own computer before, and they're able to be successful in our major because we teach from the ground up. We're a very foundational program. So we teach you that introduction and how to program. Yes, we use a specific language, Java, but we teach you how to think algorithmically and how to build that good foundation, like when you're building a house. Um, you can't just start with the plumbing. You have to start with that good foundation. Um, and that's what our program, I think, really excels at, is that we're helping students from the ground up. So whether you've been um, programming since you, you knew what a keyboard was or whether you're like, what's a mouse? I thought that was a thing that my cat hunts. Um, it's totally fine because you don't need to have any prerequisite experience. So after the first year, that's when you start taking more computer science classes because first you got to, like I said, build that foundation. Um, now we do have a um, second semester class um, our, our programming concepts course, uh, discrete mathematics course, um, which is a different type of math. So yes, students will do three semesters of calculus, but then they'll also do some fun things like discrete mathematic and linear algebra. Um, some of them may think it's not so fun, uh, but I've heard some of them think it is fun. So it just depends on, on which, um, which student you're talking to. Um, you take two semesters of physics, one semester of chemistry, um, and then you do some of your electives, you start to kind of sneak in there. So the, the thing about our semester by semester display is that we try to make things very balanced. So you're taking like maybe two programming classes a semester and you're filling it in with a math and a general education class and maybe a science. Um, if you try to take too many things at once, bad things happen and we don't want that. Um, but everything's also a prerequisite for everything else. So 116 feeds into 216. 216 and 226 feed into 230 and 316. You need the programming concepts before you could get into data structures and things of that nature. Um, all students who are computer science students need to take a basic science elective, which is something that's on top of the chemistry and physics, uh, but you can take lots of fun courses. It's a nice big category. In the third year, Sorry. Uh, in the third year, you start taking some more classes. So you take our assembler class, our operating systems class, a theory class, which is automata, uh, engineering statistics class, and then you start taking the real fun stuff. Um, so software engineering and some of your restricted electives. So there's two different types of restricted electives. There's computer science restricted electives, which we'll get into some examples uh, in a little bit. Um, and then there are other restricted electives, which can be non-computer science classes, or they could be more computer science classes. Um, every student has to take four CSC restricted electives and three other restricted electives. 
Now, a couple of slides ago, I promised that I would explain what the concentrations, how they were different, or the tracks. So the concentrations take those seven electives, and instead of being able to choose from anything in the category, it's more concentrated to the things that are particular to that topic. So the game development concentration, um, you choose from classes related to game development. The cybersecurity concentration, you're choosing classes that are only related to cybersecurity. Um, and, and those are specific classes. Whereas if you do the general bachelor's of science in computer science, you get to choose from anything. So you could take a game class, you could take a cybersecurity class, you could take a class on databases, you could take a class on cloud computing, you could kind of take whatever. So it depends if you want to concentrate or if you want to just kind of take a little bit of everything to see what you like. Um, the tracks are not as rigorous as a concentration because the tracks allow you to, if you want to take three or four classes specifically as your electives, then you can be part of the track. But if you decide you don't want to, that's okay. Whereas the concentration is a very specific, I have to take these classes, um, as opposed to I have to take these categories. Now, if you're paying close attention, you'll notice that there are only two required English classes. The first is the English 101 class, which is the introduction to, um, to uh, writing and comprehension. Um, and then the second, this English 331 class, is a technical writing class. So that's helping you how to write cover letters and how to um, write your resume, how to read a technical report, write a technical report, things of that nature. Um, we also have, and then in your last semester, um, your, your last two semesters, that's when you're really taking the last of your electives, some of the last of your general education classes. Um, and if you notice, every semester is about 15 hours. Um, there's one semester that's like 16 and there might be one that's 14. But every semester is around that 15 hours, um, which is a really good balance because in order to be a full-time student, the minimum number of hours is 12. And the maximum number of hours you're allowed to take without um, someone on the advising staff having to get allowed is 18. So 15 is right there in the middle and that's a, a really good balance um, for a lot of our students. Now the nice thing is if you come in with a lot of AP credits, you could do things like double major or minor and still be a full-time student and kind of add some of those things in. So if you came in with a lot of GEPs or, or you came in with some other things. Um, if you come in with nothing, it's still possible to do, but sometimes you might have to take a, a summer class or you might have to be here an extra few semesters but the great thing is is that no employer ever says what you would you spend an extra semester in, in school for what they're really caring about is your your work experience your GPA your letters of recommendation same thing with graduate schools um, that's the, those are the things that they're looking for so this gives you a nice semester by semester display of what you do um, here as a computer science student now I did say I'd explain um, the, the sampling, you know, what kinds of CSE restricted electives. Um, and the nice thing is, is we have tons more. There's like a, a giant, if you look at our course catalog on the website, um, and there's so many more. And we usually offer a few special topics classes. So for example, this coming spring, we're offering a class called Computational Geometry for the first time ever. Um, and so if that sounds fun to you, then that's a, a class that could potentially be offered. We're always offering new things and our faculty are always getting involved. Students can also do research or software engineering projects in, um, in order to um, fulfill these categories. Now I also promised that I would explain what the ABM program looks like. And what happens is those four CSC restricted electives I talked about, what you do is as you're an undergrad student, you take four of those classes at the graduate level. So for example, we have a artificial intelligence class both at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level. So you would take the graduate level one instead of the undergraduate level one, and then that will double count towards your master's degree. 
And then whenever you finish your undergraduate degree, they give you one year to finish your master's because at that point you will have taken four classes that sort of double count um, and you'll basically have two semesters left. So it's a, it's a great way for people who already know they wanna to go to graduate school or some of our high achieving students to not have to take an extra year after their undergrad to, to only have one year instead of two or three years um, to, to finish the master's. So it's really, really great. Now, our computer programming minor is one of the biggest minors at NC State, uh, but it should not be intimidating at all. We have lots of students do it from within the College of Engineering and from outside the College of Engineering. I have some political science majors. Um, we have a biology major. Um, we have uh, someone who's in creative writing. Uh, we have uh, a lot of students in mechanical engineering and uh, a few other engineering majors who decide that this is something they want to do. And it's very easy um, to take one class a semester and be able to complete the minor. We also offer all of these classes as 10 week summer classes so that you can do them while you're doing an internship or you could kind of add them in without having to add to the rigor of your existing schedule. Um, and we try to make sure that there are several sections open so that minor students will be able to, to fit them in. Um, so the computer programming minor is, is rigorous, um, but it's a great addition to almost any major. Um, so it's a, a, a one thing that we offer. We have our computer science degree and then we have our computer programming minor. So those are kind of the two, the two big things that we do. Now, I also talked a lot about research. We have a lot of faculty who are doing so many fun things with research. Um, and if you go over to our website and you click on research, you'll see all the fun things um, that our faculty are doing. We have folks who are doing um, computer-based education research, and especially now that we're in a, a large virtual environment, um, some of their research was already being done and, and is, is help, helpful um, to our current situation. Um, and some of the other things like um, artificial intelligence, theory, network, security, these are all big buzzwords that you have to think about. You know, we're having meetings more online and we're doing banking more online and so many more things that are happening, our systems need to be secure. So um, lots of fun research happening. Um, we have one of our faculty is doing research um, um, as it relates uh, to, to dogs. They have dogs as part of their research. We have another faculty member who is um, looking at bots um, and another faculty member who's combing through um, all sorts of social media stuff. Uh, someone else who's um, looking at uh, the spam calls that you get and, and, the, and the auto or the robotic um, kind of robocalls that you get. Um, so all sorts of things that are happening that's not just research for research sake, but things that will hopefully improve our lives. Um, and I've been talking a lot about, okay, what are the classes you take? Well, generally when students graduate, they do one of two things. They go on to graduate school or they get a job. And then after they finish graduate school, they usually get a job. It always funnel towards getting a job. So what types of things can our graduates do, whether they're undergrads, graduate students, PhD students? They can be software engineers, they could be game developers, they could be security experts, they could be professors and researchers, they could be executives. Um, we have a lot of entrepreneurs. One of our tracks is an entrepreneurial track. We have um, all sorts of students who have created um, web apps and things like that. We've even had students who have become pilots, lawyers, doctors, anything you can think of, our majors do. As I said before, when we talked about our ePartners program, it is absolutely, everybody uses computers, so our majors can go anywhere they want. Um, the most important thing is getting experience, um, which you can do. We have our, our CSC graduate career services. We also have a career development center. Um, so yes, we have our own CDC, not that CDC, but, but our own career development center. That's fabulous. Um, we have a co-op program. 
Um, we have, you know, a lot of students will do in internships in the summer or internships if they have a lighter course load. Um, and so students are able to get paid experience um, and they're able to then usually leverage that into job offers. Um, and you'll hear from our student ambassadors in just a minute about the, the things that they've done. Um, so what do our undergraduates do? They do everything. Our major is not limited at all. They could do research, they could do co-ops where they work for a semester instead of going to school and then they come back. Um, they could do internships. Uh, when the world is open, they can study abroad. Uh, in fact, two of our students have studied abroad um, and so they'll be able to talk to you about their experiences. Um, they help other students learn like our STARS Alliance. Um, they participate in the university programs. Uh, there's the Women in Computer Science, Women in Science and Engineering, the Society of Women Engineers. Um, there's also other groups, um, uh, NSBE, and um, there's the Society of uh, Professional Hispanic Engineers. Um, Rebecca will talk about that in, in a little bit because I know that they have a longer acronym. Um, everybody has acronyms. It's, it's, a, it's a very NC State thing. Um, we have have our student ambassadors, uh, their teaching assistants, lab instructors. I mean, our undergraduates do so many things. Now, some of them just come to school and they they um, and they they get their degree, but many of our students participate in at least one other program, um, whether it's a club sport, whether it's being part of a, um, a, a group, um, whether it's being a student ambassador or a college ambassador. Um, the university has mental health ambassadors. Um, every, everything has an ambassador because our students are the ones you want to hear from. And since I've been babbling enough, um, I would like to turn it over to our student ambassadors. So the first ambassador that we're going to hear from um, is Anna Owens. Hi there, I'm Anna Owens. I'm a senior in computer science and I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, in addition to being a student ambassador, I'm involved in the Park Scholarships program. I played some club basketball. I also did a little bit with the Country Music Association Club. Um, and I've also had the opportunity to serve as the president of Women in Computer Science for the past year or so. It's a very active club on campus and through it I've been able to go to the Grace Hopper celebration and I've also been able to help plan the annual Diamond Hacks Hackathon. Uh, freshman year, I worked in an undergraduate research lab under Dr. Chris Parnon, who I met at a lightning talk about research in one of the first weeks of school. Um, as a Spanish minor, I also had the opportunity to study abroad in Valencia, Spain the summer after my freshman year. And as far as internships go, um, I was actually one of the students that Ms. Marini mentioned who came in with kind of no background in computer science at all. And one of my favorite parts of NC State is that I felt like it prepared me to jump into a new environment or a new technology and be able to kind of tackle the challenges I faced with resilience and a growth mindset. Um, and so I ended up getting internships with Royal Caribbean and the cybersecurity department there and also the past two summers at Microsoft. Um, after I'm graduating this December, I'm planning on going on to the accelerated bachelor's master's program um, with a concentration in security. And then next fall, I'll be joining Microsoft as a software engineer full time. Um, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions you might have. Um, I'm very happy to help anyone who's interested in NC State. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, our next student ambassador is Chris. Hello, I'm Chris Blackie. Um, I'm a senior studying computer science and economics. I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, like Anna, I also came in with zero computer science experience or programming experience. I actually was an econ major first and then added on the uh, computer science later. Um, outside of being a student ambassador, um, I'm in the University Scholars Program. I'm in the Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity and I'm the co-founder and treasurer of the Green Greeks organization. Um, I've also completed undergraduate research under uh, Dr. Barnes in the Game to Learn Lab, where we built educational tools, um, which are in, in play now. Um, I was also a, a teaching assistant um, with Ms. Marini, actually. I was, I was her TA, uh, so I got to know her pretty well over the, over the years. Um, and then this, this past uh, summer, I, I was a software engineering intern um, at Capital One. So you guys have any questions? Yeah, just like, just like Anna said, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to answer. I'm always on my phone anyway, so... <laughs> except during this presentation, of course, everybody has been, you know, wonderful. Um, and last but not least, um, we're, uh, our last student ambassador uh, is Rebecca and um, she's gonna speak with you now. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Rebecca Turan. I was born in Venezuela, but I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
I'm a senior with a strong interest in security. I'm actually in the last class I need to complete the security track, so I'm really excited about that. Along with computer science, I'm also majoring in French, and with that, I got the opportunity to study abroad a whole semester in France. Had a lot of fun over there. In addition to being a student ambassador, I am involved in Super Ritmo. Super Ritmo is NCSU's only got in dance team. As Ms. Marini said, I'm also part of SHIP, which stands for the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. Uh, since I studied abroad, I joined the Pack Abroad Ambassadors, in encouraging other people to go abroad. I'm also part of the Ben Franklin dual degree program, so that's where I have my computer science and my French double majors. And I'm also part of WIC, so Women in Computer Science. Through SHIP, I've been able to travel to a national convention every single year, and I've been able to go to places such as Seattle, Phoenix, and Kansas City. And then through which, just like Anna mentioned, I also had the opportunity to attend Grace Hopper back in 2018 in Houston. So these conferences have helped me learn so much, and they have been really a crucial piece to my internship journey. So I've been here uh, already for four years. Um, I'll be finishing this May. And every single summer that I've been here at NC State, I've had a different internship. So my first summer, I was in Milwaukee with Northwestern Mutual. My second summer, I was with EY in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then summers three and four, I was with Cisco. Uh, my first summer was out on the West Coast. Second summer was supposed to be on the West Coast, but COVID made it virtual, but still really enjoyed my experience with them. So I will be graduating in May. I'm still, I have a couple offers and I'm still trying to figure out where exactly I'm gonna go, but I do know I plan to enter the security field and help further defend against attackers. So now I'll turn it back to Ms. Marini. Thank you so much, Rebecca, and all of our student ambassadors. Um, normally, when we do this presentation in public, I'm like, look, real life computer science students, this is what they look like. Um, and the great thing is, is that yes, these are some of our overachieving um, computer science students. They're doing a lot of things. They have a lot of bullet points. Um, but we have over 1300 undergraduate students. Um, and some of them do a lot more. Um, we've had people who triple major and triple minor and are here for a, a couple more years. Um, than the the average student. Um, we have some students who just come in, come out. Um, you know, we've had students who do two plus two programs where they do their first two years at a community college and then come here for their last two, three years, depending on, you know, what sorts of things they want to do. Um, so the great thing is we have a wonderful website, our csc.ncsu.edu. Um, it's a great website and we're always updating it with information. We have some great videos on there um, to check about like why NC State and why computer science science. Um, the, the pack, we really are a, a, a very friendly wolf pack. Um, and we're also on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Some of our student ambassadors do uh, Instagram takeover days where they show a life a day in the life of a, a computer science student. Um, so I've seen all sorts of things from them, you know, eating at Waffle House to, um, you know, taking walks around Lake Raleigh or or other places on Centennial Campus. Um, and so, so we're out there, um, and we just wanted to thank you so much for um, taking a a look into our computer science department. On our website, um, we have two things that might be of interest to you. We have a Ask an Ambassador, where you can see all of our ambassador profiles and you could kind of reach out to any of the ambassadors. And we also have sort of an Ask an Advisor, though that's not what it's called. Um, there's a, an online form you could fill out if you have any advising questions. Um, and that's where my office uh, comes in. Uh, we meet um, with each computer science student individually at least once a semester to discuss their individual concerns. Um, all three of the students you saw today have, you know, some of them have double majors and some of them are going on to graduate school and all of them have came in with different things. And so each student deserves that individual attention um, to make sure that we could come up with a plan for them. Um, I just recently met with a student who um, is part of ROTC and has a five-year plan and she wants to do the cybersecurity concentration and so we sat down virtually um, and figured out what her plan would look like and how she could make sure she's a full-time student each semester um, and so that's a, a service that we offer at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level with there's advising as well um, so we don't just you know, sit back and let students jump off the deep end. We are very much here to help them. Um, we have uh, a wonderful faculty and staff, um, and this really is a great place. Um, so we hope you're all staying safe and well, um, and as always, go pack.